Okay, guys, um, today we're continuing with our uh, introductory algorithms. Um, and we will be looking at um, linear regression today. So, um, linear regression. Okay, so um, first off, what is it? Well, so linear regression is a supervised learning algorithm Thirty minutes over time. Then. That is applied to real value. This is very important. Real value target functions. in order to uh, predict a range of possible outputs for a given input. And so I'd like to point out that this is a predictive or a, regress uh, a regression algorithm. Okay, so this is not classification. So all of the algorithms that we've seen so, so far. Uh, have been um, classification algorithms, um, and this is a um, not a classification algorithm. This is giving us a range of possibilities for a given input. Okay, so um, what are the assumptions for this? So um, we're assuming with this algorithm that so uh, assume. Targets um, are close um, to some linear combination Features so the measurements of the input data. Okay, so we need to assume that um, the um, the labels of our data lie in some linear combination or close to some linear combination of the input. Data. Um, so. Um, Unlike uh, other machine learning algorithms, uh, linear regression has a closed form solution. Another way of saying that is that there is an equation 
that solves linear regression. Okay. Now, there's also a um, uh, a way to solve this using optim optimization techniques such as gradient descent or stochastic gradient descent, but we haven't learned that yet. So we're going to deal with the closed form solution first. Okay. So there's some possible applications of linear regression. Well, in general, linear regression is used to show relationships or dependencies between um, feature measures and um, their labels, right? So, um, so some examples, right? Um, let me see. Uh, so you can use uh, linear regression to um, maybe relate the force um, for stretching a spring Um, to the distance uh, the string the spring I mean uh, the spring stretch so you can actually use linear regression to model the relationship here and you can derive, in fact, the known as Hooke's law. Okay. Um, another example would be something like um, uh, and use linear regression to relate the salary. Um, of a developer to their age and experience. And so, okay, so these are some applications of linear regression. Okay, so um, before looking at maybe complicated examples, I thought that today we'd start with a very, very simple example, uh, and a very simple programming example. So if you haven't already, uh, go to Blackboard and go to the data sets folder. I posted a new post in there uh, titled developer salary data or something like this, or regression data. Uh, go ahead and get that and throw that into one of your Jupyter notebooks. We're going to use that um, in a few minutes. Okay, so suppose we have data that looks like this. So we have x and y, right? And suppose we have something like um, Suppose this is like x1, y1, right here. Okay. And then suppose x2, y2, looks like right here. And then X three, Y three is right there. Now, so in this example, we have these are so this is our feature, and then here this will be our label. Okay. So, for example. Um, you can think of this as maybe like, so like an example would be like, uh, 
a measurement of age for a, a developer. And then here we can have an example of salary. US. Okay. Now, suppose that we are curious. Oh, sorry. I'm using superscripts, which will become apparent why when we get to more complicated examples. But, like, suppose we want to know what the possible salary for X star is. The star. And we don't know the label, but we want a possible salary for someone that is that age, right? Well, what we're going to do with linear regression is we're going to seek a line that best fits this data. What we want, right, we want a line that somehow approximates those points, right? Okay. So, how can we find this line? Well, basically what we want is to solve a system of equations. So for example, we want y1 to be equal to say a slope times x1 plus w2, an intercept. And we want to hit that line as close as we can. But then we also want to hit the other point with the line using those same slope and intercepts. So we also want to hit that line if we can. I mean, that point if we can with the same line. And we also want to hit that one, right? We want y3 to equal. Uh, the slope of oh, yeah, is one. This is also one. So this is what we want. Linear regression wants this, right? But these clearly don't lie on some line together, right? There's no line that will fit all these. So in regression, the best we can possibly do is maybe like approximately those points. Okay. So ignoring the approximation part for now, what does this system look like? Well, this looks like, well, um, we write this using matrix notation. This is x1, x2, X3, and then a one, a one, and a one times the vector <clears throat> W1, W2, and that's going to, we want that to equal Y1, Y2, and then Y3. So <clears throat> to solve this problem, to get this line that best fits the data, we wish to solve this uh, system of equations. So what we can say is like, okay, just we can denote this matrix by capital X. We can denote this vector by lowercase w. And then we can denote, denote this vector by um, one. Okay. So really, <clears throat> what we're wishing to solve, so again, we want to solve x times w is equal to y. That's what we want. Okay. Now, as the picture shows, this is likely not solvable. Like x here is more than likely not invertible. Right, it's going to be a tall, um, skinnyish matrix in this case, right? So this is likely not invertible. So the best we can do, so the best we can do is 
is solved for an approximation. Saying W hat with X times W hat approximately equal to one. That's the best that we can do. So how do we how do we find this? Well, starting from this equation here, um, we know that x is more than likely not invertible, but we can play with this and get well. Let's just multiply both sides by x transpose. And so we'll call this solution to this system w hat. Okay. Now this here, you recall from linear algebra, that's going to be invertible. So what we have now is that w hat is equal to x transpose times x inverse times x transpose times y. This right here is the closed form solution to um, linear regression. Okay. So starting, we want this, we can't do that, but this is always solvable, and this will be an approximate solution to this. This is invertible, so we solve for w hat by multiplying both sides of this equation by the inverse of x transpose times x, which um, I should note that this right here, x transpose times x inverse, this is called the pseudo inverse. Uh, so that's the pseudo inverse of x. Okay. So now, once we solve this system of equations, then we're, we're going to say that if we want to know what the approximate um, output or label for this x star is, then we, we'll say that, that um, y is going to be approximately. Um, W hat one times x star plus w hat two. Once we solve that system. And this is a prediction. Okay. This prediction for a given input will give us an approximate output. Provided the data closely lies to some linear approximation, in this case a line in higher dimensional space, a hyperplane. Okay, but so we're going to stick to um, one feature, one uh, output label for now, and we'll do more complicated feature measures um, in a following lecture. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's the closed form solution to linear regression, which now will give us a prediction for a given input. Um, that we're concerned with. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and code this up. So let's share my screen there. Okay, um, let me find my Jupyter notebook. Okay, here we go. Let's go ahead and title this before I forget it. Um, All right, so this is the data set that um, I posted to Blackboard. Um, these are age, so age and then uh, developer salary um, for that given age. And this is actual real data that I found um, where for 18 year old developers in the US, uh, the average salary was $17,784, so forth and so on. This is from maybe two years ago, three years ago, but these are actual average salaries for age. Okay. 
And then, so today we'll be using plots and we'll also use random, um, and I'll explain why we use random uh, when we get to there. All right, so let's run this cell. Okay, so we have X and Y. Um, by the way, if you don't want the output here in your cells, just put a semicolon there and then it won't uh, appear. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and uh, look at our data. Or So I'm going to say that our data is equal to a bunch of uh, twofolds of X and Y. So uh, X for x and zip ages x um, y. So there's our data. Um, and let's plot this to, to see if it more or less follows a linear trend. So I'm going to say scatter. OK, and we're going to scatter um, point P for P and data. And make sure to always label your, your um, axis. So x axis equals 2. Um, developer age in years. And the y axis is going to be equal to developer salary. USD, and then um, title equals to um, <coughs> dollar salary plot or something. Okay, and then we're gonna have no legend on here, so legend equals. Run that. It's gonna take a moment to uh, to. To run is typical with Julia the first time you run um, anything from an imported package. It takes uh, 30 seconds to run or so. OK, so here we have um, <clears throat> age versus salary. Okay? And we see that it more or less follows some linear trends. Um, so let's go ahead and um, split our full data set here into um, a training set and a testing set to validate our model once our model is made. So um, we're going to do this by, um, uh, say, uh, randomly select data points from the full data set um, to make a training so how can we do that? Well, we say train x is equal to, and this is where we imported random. So we want a random um, subsequence from data or from uh, ages x, okay, where um, we choose points from ages x with probability 0.5 or something like that. Okay, and then train y is going to equal uh, the array of say x2 for x in data. Data is the, the, the collection of those tuples, right? So everything in data is a tuple. The second entry from those tuples is its label. The first entry is the numerical age, right? Um, so if um, x1 in train um, x. Okay, and then train data is equal to zip of uh, train x train y. So, and train. Yeah. Let me make sure that I did this right. 
Yeah, so I'm going to put this into a tuple. Let's do it. There. So 18, 17, 17. So let's make sure that that's correct. 18, 7, 84. Good. Uh, so 20. 22 is 25, 206. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, so they all, they all match up. So that's good. And then we're going to say that our test data is equal to um, x for x in data if x not in. I say not in. So it's an epsilon with a, a cross to it. So how I did that, I did uh, so slash not in, press tab. So you're not in um, train data. So I've split my data up. Okay. And again, if you don't want the output, just put a semicolon. Okay. Okay, so now that we have that, we just need to solve um, the that system of equations that we had before. So um, we first make the matrix. X. So recall um, the matrix X consists of the measurements and then ones in the second column for a uh, bias. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say x is equal to ones, and then take the length of frame x, and then this would be a two-dimensional matrix. So notice it's ones all the way down. So all we need to do is replace the first column with the measurements from train X. So we can do that easily by saying um, X column uh, one is equal to train X. So if we look at X now, we have our X values and the ones there, just like I had on the board, right? So now we need to solve for w hat, right? So next solve for um, w hat. Oh, by the way, I did that by typing w and then backslash hat and then press tab and you get w hat. So, okay, um, w backslash hat is equal to, and we literally just plug in the formula x transpose times x backslash, so that's taking the inverse of it, times x transpose times train y. Okay, so this is equivalent to, so, so the code below well, um, so I'll, like, I'll make note of it right here. Note, um, if AX equals to B, then, um, so uh, X equals A backslash B solves the system. And just note that for this syntax here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So notice W, so this is W, it's a, it's a two element array as it should be. The dimension should mat, uh, match up. So then let's go ahead and define the regression line, i.e. The prediction function. So we can just say, um, uh, say prediction for a given input x, 
is equal to um, w backslash hat tab one times x plus uh, w backslash hat two. Okay. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and plot this against our uh, train x. Okay, so for our train data, so let's go ahead and say, okay, um, gather. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this here. So I'm going to type it again. So, and this is now uh, train data. Okay. And then I want to um, plot over that this line. Um, X goes to, um, oh, I can just do the regression line. I don't have to do that, or the, the prediction line. And then uh, uh, hold on one second, let me plot that. Okay. And then what happens to this? So I guess like a quick fix around for this, um, we could just say plot um, prediction x so it's gonna be a twofold here, so x comma prediction x for x equals uh, 30 to 80 or something like that. So 30, say 80. Um, close off that array. So let's run this cell again here. So there's our data. Went too far. Let me do this again. I'm just getting, so it goes up to like 60, which is a reasonable. There. So we can see that this line that we, we found uh, more or less hits uh, close to our uh, train data, right? So now let's use it on test data, right? So we use the, t the train data to make the line. Let's see how well this works against um, uh, test data. Test data. I'm gonna do this all in one go. Copy. So it's so now this goes down to 18. All right. So we see that it it's hit these points here, right? Um, but maybe it's not the best predictor, right? You see that down here it's, it's actually off by quite a bit. So we can fix that by um, um, picking more random points. So I'm going to pick points from with probability uh, 0.7 now to get more points. Solve these again. Just pretty much. Okay. So, but we're, we're more concerned with the test data now, so let's run this and see what happens. Okay, now see how this line is fit much closer to these points now? So what we can do is we can figure out the range of, of, of errors here. So we'll make this go down to 18. Okay, so 
So here was train data. Okay, there's the plot I wanted. So we see that there's error right here, right? So um, let's figure out what that error is. So this is our train data here, right? So maybe I should put, make like nice little cells here to do this all at once. And I'll call this uh, training data plot. Okay, let's get rid of this cell here. And then here, I'll call this um, test data plot. Okay, so we see that there's a bunch of errors here. We're, we're not hitting everything exactly. So one easy thing that we can do to account for those errors and get a range of possible answers is to figure out what the maximum distance from a point to the line is here, and we can get a range of possible y values. So what we can do um, is we can say, um, let's make a, an error array equal to um, the absolute value of prediction of x. So x one minus x two for x in um, what did I call it up here? It was the train data x y. So so it's train data so x in train data. So absolute values here, we get a bunch of numbers. Okay, so um, okay, let's look at the maximum of this. So maximum of error array is twelve thousand dollars. So what we can do now. So, is my uh, mouse work? Copy this on the test data so like this. So now, so this is the original line here. So what I'm going to do is I know that this is the error from the training data. So I can now plot prediction plus. Um, Maximum error. Copy that. And then also subtract there. Let's see what this does. Perfect. So now with our test data, we see that. So here, um, So let me make this plot a little bit better. Um, we can say um, label equals false. And then I do want a legend now. <clears throat> okay. And I'll say um, label equals regression line. And then here, label equals regression line plus error. Okay. And then here, label equals uh, regression line minus error. 
So you can see here that plus or minus the error captures all of the data in our test data, right? So um, what you can say is um, um, uh, you can say prediction interval for a given x here is equal to um, say um, prediction I call it uh, yeah, prediction x okay prediction of x minus the maximum of the error rate. And typically you wouldn't calculate maximum of that array over and over again. I'm just doing it because it's kind of illustrative of what we're doing right now. <clears throat> X plus maximum error. Again, this is not optimal, but I'm just doing it for teaching purposes. Just see that prediction minus error, prediction plus maximum error. Okay, so let's test data here. So let's look at um, prediction um, interval for, I don't know, a 41 year old developer. There's that interval, and we see that the actual salary is 88,000, basically 89,000. And 89,000 does lie in this interval. Okay, so um, this is a simple example using um, regression and to, to get an interval for which you think that, um, in fact, every single one of these based off of this plot for our test data, all of those are going to lie within that interval. Okay, and some of them are just like, yeah, they're all in that interval, right? So this is a really good example of how useful regression can be. Um, these are real averages, average salaries for developers. And this machine learning algorithm that we've learned um, can take in an age and make a accurate prediction as to where the salary should be for a given age. Okay. So um, for you guys, uh, it's up to you to go find your own uh, uh, data that is close to being linear um, and then make a Jupyter notebook that uses linear regression to make approximations on uh, the data. So you find your data, you split it into train and test data, and then you show me that um, you were able to get a relatively accurate prediction on the test data that you didn't use in training the model. Okay, so that will be it for today. I um, hope that you uh, enjoyed the lecture. Everyone stay safe, stay healthy. Um, and if you need anything, just send me an email. So I will talk to you later. All right, have a good day. Have a good day.